Amen. Amen. So in loving memory, and like I said, in silence, let's take a few minutes to remember Dr. Dixon, our founder. Yes. Insight 
and guidance of the Holy Spirit and word of God into each class. She's an awesome teacher. Amen. 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 Dr. Dixon of Agape Love Bible College is remembered among all the other trailblazers who went before. So her vision is still offered this year as an associate, bachelor, master, master's, and doctorate in theology and other degree programs. Our classes are accredited through Transworld Accrediting Commission International. Sadly, as of 2023, our dear beloved Dr. Dixon has been promoted to her heavenly home. Today in 2024, we are committed to doing everything that Dr. Joyce Marie Dixon has asked us to do. We are continuing the work of the ministry and working in the Bible college. You can still hear Dr. Dixon on Joy 1340 and 98.7 FM every Wednesday at 12.45 p.m. Courageously, Dr. Dixon's daughter, Sarah M. Not, Dr. Sarah M. Knox, it's me. <laughs> we wouldn't have guessed that. <laughs> is carrying the work by, by putting on her mother's shoes. Dr. Dixon's last word to me was, put on my shoes. We are ministering in the church on Sunday and conducting Bible college every Saturday. Traditionally, we are still holding fast to the Brandon J. Knox Scholarship, which Dr. Dixon did to remember her son, and a way to bless those less fortunate, but have a lot of love for the word of God. Dr. Dixon was carrying this work for 35 years, so pray for Dr. Sarah Knox Church and Bible College staff to keep going forward. Amen. Amen. One of the ministries that Dr. Sarah Knox has been led to pre present to the body of Christ has been the marriage supper of the Lamb. This ministry should continue <coughs> to grow to, oh, sorry, to grow to, right? <laughs> continue to run continually unto the Lord returns to take those yeah. all he loves to the marriage supper of the Lamb in heaven. Yeah. See 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18. But I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this is we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord should not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself should descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words, Revelation 19, 6 through 9.
she put this poem in it, which is actually a song. And I know you all may be familiar with this, so I'm just going to read this as we are preparing for giving. And, and then we're going to pray. Brown baby, brown baby. And I'm not the singer of the family, that's my mother, and then the state will say that. Brown baby, brown baby, as you grow up, I want you to drink from that plenty cup. I want you to stand up tall and proud. I want you to speak up clear and loud. Uh -huh. Brown baby, brown baby, brown baby, as years roll by, I want you to go with the head held up high. Yes. I want you to live by the justice code, and I want you to walk down the freedom road. Yes. Brown baby, now lie away, lie away sleeping, lie away here in my arms while your daddy and mama protect you and keep you safe from harm. Oh, little brown baby, brown baby, it makes me glad that you will have things I've never had. When out of men's hearts all the hate is hurled, you're going to live in a better world. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. Yeah. 
get digitally. Mm. And we do. So that would be Cash App, you know, Cash App and Signal. And then it's Agape, spelled A G A P E. It's a Greek word. A for Apple, G for George, A for Apple, P for Peter, E for Elevator. Love, Bible, and that's it. Three words. Agape, love, Bible. If you want to give digitally, say amen. 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 We're going to pray. Everybody, mind is clear. Everybody that wanted to give could give, did give. Amen. So, Father, Lord, we are giving you the praise. Amen. Somebody back here? We got an offering. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we're so grateful, Lord. We're so grateful. We're grateful, Lord. So, Father, we thank you for the offering. So, we're grateful. Father, we have to keep Dr. Dixon's vision going forward. Lord, bless every man. Bless every woman, God. They have a desire, a desire of earning to go to Bible school, Lord. They want to learn about the Bible. They want to do more than just Sunday school. They want to do more than just Tuesday night Bible study, Bible band. But, Father, they want to go to, they want to, go to school, God, where they can learn a, in a formal setting what it means. What a, oh, God, 2 Timothy 2.14, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Oh, God, what does that mean? Give them a heart, give them a mind and desire to say, yes, sign me up. And put that in mind, in my purse, I have put in my bag some cookie invitations, some book, some brochures for those. If you want to go, raise your hand. And I'm going to make sure everybody gets one that wants one. And said, I wouldn't come to Bible college, but I need a brochure. If you need one, raise your hand, please. Amen. Anybody, raise your just ex I see the bag there. So the ushers, those, you can hand them out for some. Those on the side. Deeper depths and higher heights in God. Amen. Yes. Yes. God that one to learn. Amen. It's never too late. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So we're going to continue. Lord, we thank you right now, Father God. Oh, Lord, put a hunger, desire down in their heart, Father God. Oh, God, Father, open their heart, Father. You said that Jesus was standing at the door of their heart knocking. Saying, let me come in. Amen. I believe that everyone here, if thou know about God, is not saved, then you at least know about God. Give them a desire, Father, draw near. God, you said, call me while I'm near. Yes. Oh, God, early and seek me early, and you'll find me to seek me early. Oh, God, let them have a desire to say yes to your will, God. Yes to your way, God. Take away every stone in heart. Give my heart a flesh to your people, God. Oh, you said your word, Second Chronicles 7 14. Give my people with the Humble yourselves and turn from the wicked way. Then I'll hear from heaven. I'll forgive the sin and I'll heal the land. Heal our land, God. God, in the name of Jesus. From the suburb even to the hood. From the hood to the suburb. All the in between and all around. God, save and heal, God. From the uttermost to the uttermost. Jesus, from the uttermost to the uttermost. From the uttermost to the uttermost. From the uttermost to the uttermost.
Uh, oldest son, he's 36, 35. Our baby is 27, got five children. Thank God they all grown. Eh? Now, what time have I been to the cemetery? <laughs> you see what's going on out there. I'm thinking, I'm not saying that these boys is perfect and good. No, no. Because I'm praying for them. Glory to God. May God save them that they be not lost. We say our loved ones to make it in. Praise God. Y'all don't want to have no church. Y'all don't want to have no church. What a wonderful Lord. A healing.
Lord bless those that had a heart. Amen. Amen. So we're going further. There's a part that ain't there. We can still play a, play a role in. And that's just preparing our heart. Amen. Amen. For the man of God. Amen. Amen. We love this man of God. His name is Pastor Gerald Saffold. Let's say amen. Amen. Preacher and a teacher. Oh, yeah. Amen. He's been, don't know, he's been my mentor since I first got saved. Amen. Fun. At 15, when I got the Holy Ghost, he was coming out to all the schools. Amen. He ministered to us. Amen. Amen. And I'm still learning how to sing. So wait a minute. Mr. Kowalski and Amen. Uh, and Baptist Queen, all of them trying to help me. But praise the Lord. Let's say amen for the pastor, doctor, Amen. It is all right. Gerald Saffold. They say amen. 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 You. I don't know if you can hear me better without this or with this. I'll just pick it up if, if, if it gets loud because, you know, uh, sometimes, I know y'all not that loud, but sometimes colored folk can get a little loud. <laughs> uh, but it is a pleasure to have the opportunity to share with you. I want you to know that I don't believe I'm a boring speaker. No, sir. Um, uh -uh. And I'm not, if I, if I, 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 I speak real short so that it won't look like it was boring long. Huh? <laughs> I love the Lord with all of my heart. Yes. I want you to know this little hat on my head, it don't mean that I done converted to nothing else. Uh, it just meant that I needed a prayer hat and I had to pray over it and then ask the Lord if it was okay for me to wear it. All because right, if it affected right. the anointing that's in my life, yes. I want nothing right. that will pollute what God has done and is doing yes. in my life. Yes. I love the Lord with all of my heart. Yes. I bless him. I praise him. There's nobody like him. Nobody. Hallelujah. I want you to know it is a pleasure to be able to share with, 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 uh, where she going? Like Speedy Gonzalez. <laughs> Moving everywhere. Hallelujah. We're going to try to mentor her to sit down. Hallelujah. And let some other folk do some of the things that she's doing so she can relax herself. She is taking on a great charge. I thank God for the founder of this particular ministry. And I remember Joyce when she got saved. And we were friends then. And we remained friends over the years. And then, or I should say Dr. Dixon. Hallelujah. I just know Joyce. I just know Daryl Hines. I just know Sedgie. Hallelujah. Because all of us grew up together. And I know they look, they look people get mad when you don't call them like you're supposed to call them. So you know what? I know people. I don't care about these titles. If you are nothing and you got a title, you still nothing. You just got a title. <laughs> Hallelujah. What matters is what you really are. And I am sick of people myself. It's just me. I'm sick of folk pretending and trying to be something. Hallelujah. And you ain't nothing. Glory. Right now you got to be what God says you ought to be. Let me tell you. If you're not being what God said and being what you ought to be, you still in the flesh. Well, it's too late to be praying and going and doing what you think you ought to do. You've got to be in his will. I better go with my little notes, otherwise I'm going to be done preaching before or, or talk. I'm sorry, I gave my speech. Hallelujah. Oh, God, but I feel him. Hallelujah. I thank you, Father, because I am nothing and you are everything. And Lord, it is my great privilege to be able to serve you in whatever capacity. I don't know why you chose me, but I am so glad that you did. I thank you and I praise you. I love you with all of my heart. I pray, God, that you would shower this place with your presence and your anointing. There's someone here, God, that if they don't hear your voice, if you don't change their heart, Father, they will spend an eternity in hell. And I pray God. I pray God that you would speak a word in their heart. There's someone here and they are lukewarm. Hallelujah. I pray that you would stir your people. Come do a work in this house. This afternoon in these free, these few brief moments that I have. I give you praise, glory, and honor in the strong, unshakable name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. The book of Mark at the fourth chapter. Congratulations, graduates. I know that they had to go through some changes, especially with the death of Dr. Dixon. But y'all hang up in that. And hang up. Hallelujah. You got to be a teacher up in here. Wow. Hallelujah. If you keep on going, we don't.
don't know what God has for us, but I've learned something. If you keep walking on the road of faith, you will get to whatever God has for you. And you know what? Can't nobody take what God has for you. They don't have to like you, but they got to respect what God is doing. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Anybody, if anybody ever tell you, I ain't no good, say, you know what? I know. Because he told us he wasn't no good. Hallelujah. I ain't no good, but guess what? I got something good in me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And as quiet as you try to keep it, you ain't no good either. Hallelujah. So don't get it twisted, baby. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Sit up there like you good. Oh, I wish y'all like to talk to your neighbors. I'm telling I'd have to look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, you know you ain't no good. <laughs> Glory to God. 
Most of our ancestors, our grandparents, our great-grandparents, and perhaps even our parents didn't get a chance or have the opportunity to pursue a higher education or greater learning in their life. They didn't have the privilege of gaining various degrees of higher learning. But what got them over is the fact that they knew Jesus. Hallelujah. And many of us are here right now because our grandmama knew Jesus. Well, you could have been shot down in the street for places you had no business being, but somebody prayed over you. Had you on their mind. They took the time to call your name in prayer. And why there's a skeptic said, in case I don't get this said, that's what you're supposed to be doing right now. Get out the nail shot. Get out of the, put that other brother, the massage parlor. Yeah. Hallelujah. All the facials, baby, get on your face before God. Because what's standing in the way of your grandchild and your child and death yeah. is your prayer. Yeah. Yeah. You see, knowing Jesus is not merely an intellectual exercise of learning facts and statistics that you then use to calculate or deduce reason and then know with your mind and your intellect. Yes. Knowing Jesus is not an emotional feeling, a spiritual unction, or consistent premonitions. Knowing Jesus is a spiritual knowledge and reality within your inner man, your heart and your spirit. It is a knowledge that you can only receive and acquire by Holy Spirit revelation. Yeah. <laughs> the Holy Ghost is the only one who reveals Jesus. You can say J-E-S-U-S -S all day and you still don't know. You can study at every school of ministry or attend every seminary and Christian conference and still until you're gray-headed you still wouldn't know. You can achieve, achieve every level of, of Christian degree there is to have and still not know Jesus. Mere information about Jesus does not cause one to know him. You may learn the historical facts about his life and his existence upon the earth but you can only truly know him yes. when the Holy Spirit reveals him. Yes. Knowing about Jesus, knowing about, somebody help me say about. 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 Knowing about Jesus uh -huh. may pump up your ego, right. your pride and spiritual aspirations. Mm -hmm. But knowing Jesus yes. humbles your heart. Yes. Knowing about Jesus may qualify you for certain positions of power and influence within religious systems. Yeah. But knowing Jesus produces a healthy Come on. fear of God. Come on. I said a fear of God. Yeah. Listen, that's what's missing in the church now. It's a fear of God. You think you can wear what you want and do what you want and say what you want. But man, back in the day, when folk had a fear of God, they wouldn't do anything. God was watching you. People have gotten sloppy because preachers have gotten sloppy. Church people have gotten sloppy. Somebody help me say sloppy. You should have spit a little bit with this. Many of us are living sloppy lives. Barely pray, you don't fast, and you get in the word like I used to do during the commercials. Hallelujah! <laughs> this was years ago, this was not last week. Don't play. You see, knowing about Jesus will give you respect among many men, but knowing Jesus releases power through you and partnership between you and God. Help me, listen, partnership between you. God don't want you to do nothing for him. He wants you to do it with him. God, what you want me to do? What you want me to do, God? I don't want you to know me. Right. That's what Jesus said. I just want you to know. Yeah. 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 You don't have to do nothing for 
for me. God don't need you in the choir. You sure enough don't need them two little dollars you're trying to save. To be true, productive, continuously useful servants of God, we must maintain within our hearts a duality, a dichotomy of sorts. Our relationship with God has at least two sides. I got to hurry up. Oh, Lord, look at here. We fail. Am, I, am I boring y'all yet? No. Yeah, I, I, listen, I know somebody said, I wish I could say it. I, I heard it. Hallelujah. I am not going to go all day here. Listen, we, listen, we faithfully seek, learn, and follow the Lord daily as his disciples. But we also act for him in his stead when we exercise his will as ministering apostles or prophets or evangelists, pastors, teachers, ministers, and whatever God has called you to. So that's two sides. On the one hand, we are learning, reading, studying, meditating in his word, and seeking him. But on the other hand, we are always living out, performing, executing, and doing what his will is. People see the outward performance of his will through our life. Yes. But only God sees yes. the private learning yes. and humble submitting of our hearts yes. to him. Yes. Our God, Matthew 6 says, the father who sees in secret yes. shall reward you openly. Yes. Don't worry. If you're doing some devilment in secret, it's going to come out to you. I'm stopping for effect, and I'm stopping to get a breath, too. <laughs> this goal of getting old ain't what it's cracked up to be. <laughs> to stop learning and knowing in God, and I applaud you for learning. And having a desire, I believe you're here because you have a desire to know. To stop learning and knowing in God is to stop growing in God. Some of you go to church every Sunday and you ain't grown. Been in the choir 30 years and you ain't grown. You bored on the usher. I mean, you usher on the board. And you're not growing. Oh, you ain't saying that because I'm at your house right now. Hearing the same stuff every Sunday. I people used to come to my church and they would say, listen, I want to join your church. I said, why are you leaving your? <laughs> because what I don't want you to do, don't go out of your church, grow out. Come on. In other words, I'll stay there, but you can only go as high as your leadership. If your pastor don't want no more of Jesus, then you're going to get to his ceiling. And you got to find a place that takes you where you are trying to go. And I'm going to tell you, you can't eat everybody's cooking. If you've been Baptist all your life, baby, sometimes it takes time to move. Oh, did nothing but Baptist say that. I'm talking to you. I was born Kojic. I, my grand, my mama was dancing with me in her womb when I when, when before I got you got here. Baby, sometimes it's time to move. God is trying to move you somewhere. It's not merely a physical place, but the physical place must match the spiritual place He's trying to take you to. Man, if I had time, oh Lord, if I had time, I sure enough would, would elaborate on some things. I'm telling you, it, it is man, 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 man. If you knew where God was trying to take you, baby, you would let them friends go. As a matter of fact, let me tell you, matter of fact, we're in a season when if you are really seeking the Lord, you have to drop some of your friends. Why are they your eight school moves and they don't like to pray? They talking about you don't take all that. You better, you better get up out of my way. My goal in eternity is not that you my friend. My goal in eternity is that I make it in. I want to be with Jesus for eternity. And whether some of you know it or not, you 
Your preparation down here is preparing you for an eternal vocation. God is getting you ready now so that when you get into the, 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 the heavenly places with him, you already know what you're supposed to be doing. You are working on your holy vocation right now. Some of us ain't even qualified to be holy and heavenly janitors. Because we're not learning anything. We're not studying anything. Study to show yourself approved. A what? A A what? A what? That means you got to get up and do something with your lazy self. Don't want to do it. Maybe if all you know how to do is cook sweet potato pie, get to cooking. And don't complain when they don't call your name. I made all them pies there. See when I make a nothing. Listen, I know I can't, I ain't going to be able to do all I brought, but I'm just going to go a little while longer. Is that all right? There's only one way to grow in grace, and the Bible teaches us grow in grace and in the knowledge. Grow in grace and in the knowledge. Grow in grace and the knowledge. Grow in grace and the knowledge. There's no reason for you to be spiritually ignorant. My people, Hosea 4 and 6, are destroyed, 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 destroyed. Some of your grandkids have already been killed. Why? Because of the lack of your knowledge. You have not spent the time crying. Listen, either you cry now or you're going to cry later. If you a grandma in here, great grandmama, that your night should be, oh, God. Oh, God. Look on Jimmy, Lord. God, you know Jimmy still in love. Hallelujah. Look on them, Jesus. Say. Away from his 
father's house. Yeah. He did not get the move of God until he obeyed God. Yeah. Some of you are wondering, Lord, what is your will for my life? Just obedience. Oh. The blessing of God. You trying to get houses and cars and all this stuff. Get married and all this stuff before your time. But if you would just walk by faith, everything you want is right there on the path. Yes, sir. Yes, I heard somebody say, he's preaching like he's bad. I am. <laughs> I am mad that we are not receiving the best that God has. Yes. Because we won't humble ourselves and submit yes, to who he is. Yes. We're trying to get real stuff down here yeah. that cannot even measure to what we have. All right. I love it. Jesus told his disciples, he said, when he, the spirit of, stop calling the Holy Ghost it. Stop calling him it. And you at church and you danced and, and fell out, you did not catch the Holy Ghost. We have relegated the Holy Spirit of God to a feeling. Yes. To a dance or a tongue. Yes. Do you know he is so much better? He is the third person of the God. He is your mentor. He is your comforter. He is your friend. He is your paraclete, the one that's called alongside you to help you. So what do you need to be doing? You need to be learning how to hear his voice. When he the spirit of truth has come, he shall lead you and guide you into what? Oh! I really am. And if I ain't done, I'm just going to sit down. Hallelujah. He's going to lead you to all spirit, and he will not speak his own message. In other words, the Holy Ghost is not arrogant and he is not self-centered. Yeah. He will only speak those things. The Bible says he will speak those things. That's why I can't understand some of some even our preachers because many of them are too arrogant. They are too, and if you're here, I'm talking about you. Too arrogant and too proud. Can't talk, listen. Talk to my body. I don't know about what your body and I know some people have been threatened so they might have some guys around them. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about these folk ain't done nothing. The only folk mad at them is the ones they preach to because I want my offering back. The Bible says, oh, hallelujah. Look at what he says. He says the Holy Spirit of God, he's going to be listening to the presence of God. He's going to be listening what the Father speaks. Yeah. And then he's going to reveal it to you. Yeah. And then the Bible says he shall show you yeah. things yeah. to come. Yeah. I wish I could do that. I would tell you, just do that. Yeah. You said that was your big old lips closed. Hallelujah. But if you knew what that meant, you would have been going, <laughs> How dare you do more howling at a Packer game than you do for oh, the world of God. All right, yeah. Oh, see, I told you I wasn't going to do it all. I love Romans 11 and 33 where he says, Oh, the depths of the riches and the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unfathomable, how inscrutable and unsearchable are his judgments or his decisions and his ways. How untraceable, how mysterious and undiscoverable are his ways, his methods, and his paths. Inside of every true believer of Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. Thank you, Lord. God has put a deep hunger and desire for himself. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not just to know the church, the denomination, or the ministry. Some of you are in slavery 
to your churches, to your denomination, to your bishops, all this stuff. This is not the will of God. You can honor the man of God and the woman of God, but you are not to be enslaved by them. Some of that will take you to hell. Because God is not your focus. Man has become your focus. It's not just about knowing the word so that you can pray to receive a blessing from God. But it's learning by the revelation of God that the real blessing in God is simply knowing God. Somebody help me say, I must know him. Have I said anything yet? I, I hate to be up here all this time and ain't said nothing. Listen, if I had time, I would have told you about Paul, who after all he did in the ministry, this man established churches. He, he preached, argued in different foreign countries. This man did so much. God used his life to do so much. But while he was in the Philippian jail, do you know what he said? He said, listen, I'm not looking for an appointment to be a bishop. I'm not looking for an appointment as an apostle or to be the chief apostle of the organization. He said, this is what I want. This is my aspiration. After everything he had done in jail and prison, he said, that I may know him. In the power of the resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. Paul said, I want something infinitely better, infinitely greater, and infinitely more. He said, I'm forgetting those things that are behind me. You know what? Let all the people that did you wrong, let that go. I'm reaching to those things that are before me. Then he says, I press. Come on. Yes. Now, if I was a good Baptist preacher, I said, well, I, 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 I preach. Now, I knew I had a good Baptist somewhere. Man. Mother said, family, he going to preach. But I heard it too said, It's been out too long, because he's been up long already. Listen. We have come into the end of time. People, this is the end of of time. If you look in this world, what is happening, the Antichrist is being set up to come. This is not the time to be looking for girlfriends and boyfriends and other friends. This is time for you to be looking for him. Your eternal soul, I'm talking about you that's not saved. Listen, you better get yourself right with God. He is coming. Thank you, Lord. And what we need to do as men and women of God, we need, listen, we need to be talking about repent. Change your mind. Somebody help me shout, repent. Come on, look at the person next to you and tell them, repent. I ain't looking at nobody. I said, look at them next to you and say, repent. Change your mind about your sin. Come out. You can't have a girlfriend and a side chick. And be the deacon of the church. Come on. You, you can't be a, a homosexual and be a preacher of the gospel at the same time. Yeah. Oh, you know, I know what I'm talking about. You better judge yourself before you judge anybody else. Sick of folk trying to judge me and you don't even know my story. You bad enough to wonder what my life is. You need to come and ask me. I'm asking all these other folks that don't know who I am. Hallelujah. I love him. I love him. Hallelujah. And I'm going to tell you, if God could use some, some somebody like me, guess what? He can use somebody like me. Two sides to the true service of God. God wants to bring you to the spiritual place of knowing. Come we say knowing. Knowing. Not supposing and guessing. 
but no. Hallelujah. I'm going to stop here. I'm just going to I'm gonna do like I do when I have to take a shower. You know, my, my, my landlord is smart. What he do is he, he got the thing so they don't give you so much hot water. <laughs> After a while, that water get cold. You say, I'm going to stop this shower. <laughs> I'm going to stop right now. Oh, listen, I pray that God has spoken to your heart. Yes. I pray that I have not bored you. I want you to know I take every opportunity of ministry seriously. Yes. Jesus is yes. coming. Yes. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Yes. Get ready. Yes. Your hands with me. Father, I thank you for these people who have come to me. Yes. Many who have come to watch their loved ones graduate or their friends graduate, God. I pray in Jesus' name that you would deposit your word in their heart and God later on bring it back to mind. Let the Spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit of God convict us of our sins and, and, and that we will lay aside every weight and the sin that doth so easily beset us and get to running upon this race that you have set before us. God, be our priority. Have your way in our heart, our life, God. Forgive our sins, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, just say, Jesus. Forgive my sin. Open my eyes. So that I can see you. Silence the noise in my mind. And open the eyes of my heart. Put that hand and just say, I want to see you, Lord. I want to see you, God. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Father, I hear the voices. You hear the hearts. That your will be done. Your kingdom come for your glory in Jesus' name. I thank you.
to Richard Jameson.
recipient is Pastor Paul Joseph Boyd. Another
that was last.